please give a very warm welcome to Oliver. Thank you very much for the very nice introduction. Uh, my name is Olivier. Uh, yes, I'm French. And uh, today I will talk about uh, the sharing economy and especially the sharing economy in the mobility environment. But first of all, I would like to, to start with some questions to you guys. Um, first of all, I would like to know how many of you guys are living in an urban area. Can you raise your hand? Okay, most of you guys. So, how many of you guys really love to drive cars? Okay, and how many of you guys still own a own car, a private car, or have a business car from the company? Oh, it's still too many. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, what is a matter of fact is, um, more than 100 years, we know that people really love to drive cars. Uh, it's a kind of freedom, it's a passion. It's, uh, yeah, it's something we have a lot of emotion with. But the problem is, uh, we also know that uh, we have a big trend about urbanization. And this rhythm and the fact that we love uh, to drive cars has also a certain flip side of the medal. And uh, the flip side is this one. That's not so fun to drive a car in this kind of environment. You know, with all the traffic jams, uh, driving the city is not uh, that fun. And that's why the question is why, especially Daimler and BMW, 10 years ago, have been the pioneers of creating car sharing? Because they want to sell a lot of cars. They are still selling a lot of cars. But what they understood is the cities, they want to get rid of the cars. Or if we provide the cities and the inhabitants in the cities some alternatives, like if we start to share cars, then maybe it's a good alternative. Because honestly, most of the time, your private car is parked on the street and is not used. And if you look around you, uh, in the cities, most of the cars, of the private cars, are parked. Never any usage out of it. And it's stealing a lot of space in the city. That's why Daimler and BMW, they not decided to continue like we are the pioneer number one and the pioneer number two and we are going our own way. No, we just had a wedding. And why this wedding? Because we want to increase the relevance of car sharing for the inhabitants in the cities. Since this wedding in February, all the people living in an area where car to go and drive now have been operated together in the same area, um, the, the availability of cars have doubled. Means uh, we know as soon as you open uh, the application, you expect getting some car. And uh, in the past, it was not that obvious, because honestly, 50% of the time, it was not the case. And now, bringing together these two operations has the big advantage also to convince people in the urban area that we should share these very, very nice assets. And believe me, also people sharing cars, they love to drive cars. They are not completely unemotional by driving cars. They still love to drive the cars. But our task as a car sharing company, if we really seriously want to convince you to get rid of your, of your private car, is that we have to offer every use cases you need, uh, I would say, on a day-to-day -day basis, or once you want to spend a weekend outside of the city, or you need a bigger car, or whatever, we still have a lot of homework to do. And yes, we have good USPs, which you say, yeah, you know, the access of the car is very easy today. Uh, you have no fixed station, it's a free-floating um, concept, that means the, all the cars are in, the, in this home area, you have no fixed cars, you have no surprise when you bring back the cars, everything is in one price per minute, and uh, that's uh, very understandable, and it's, it's easy to accept. But honestly, 
if you look at the figures, yes, we like to communicate like figures in Berlin. Yeah, we have more than 300,000 customers. Sounds good, sounds great. But honestly, it's only the beginning. It's not enough. Because 300,000 customers means that in Berlin we still have too many cars, private cars, on street. And we want to improve the quality of life in the cities by sharing these kind of assets. And the big advantage of sharing cars is, um, in the case of Share Now, yeah, is your car is in 30 cities. You not only have one car in one city, your car is in 30 cities. And it's not only in Europe, it's also in North America. Share Now has a footprint in North America and Europe. Uh, we have more than 20,000 cars and uh, more than 4 million customers. And for us, um, this is only the beginning of the journey. And it's very important, and you see it on the bottom of the, uh, of the slide, that we also provide the access to other type of mobility or tr transportation, like the airports. People living in Berlin, they know uh, uh, taking a car sharing car to go to Tegel or to Schönefeld, um, it's very, very easy. And it's uh, directly to the terminal, uh, but it's not only in Berlin, it's in a lot of cities. Here you have the list. We are reducing the reason to still have a private car in the cities where we are operating. Oops. This is the next task. Doing car sharing is good, but the future is an electric one. And I give you only one example. If you take uh, the city of Madrid, where we are fully electric, we know that more than 98% of our customers in Madrid never experienced an electric car previous to getting into a car sharing car from Chernow. Means what we are also doing is helping to do the mindset change from a combustion car to an electric car. That's very important because we totally underestimate uh, what kind of change process this does mean. Um, and I promise you, the next bigger change will be the autonomous one. And there we have to trust to uh, big data and to trust to artificial intelligence and things like that. But also, the change from combustion car to electric cars is not that easy as uh, we are using it uh, today. What we are also doing in this context is we try to help the cities to create the infrastructure. What we don't want to be really crystal clear is to have a uh, charging infrastructure which is only available for us, where is a certain exclusivity to share now or to other players, whatever. We want to provide the access to a uh, charging station, not only to us, but also to private customers, because we know the reality will be also in 10 years, we will still have people owning a car or having a business car. We hope it will be an electric one. And uh, in order to uh, motivate this customer to get into the electrification, you also need to provide um, the access to a charging station. So, and um, that's the reason why in Hamburg, for example, is a good example. The city of Hamburg, they asked us um, to provide, I would say, a certain heat map about where should they build up um, the uh, charging infrastructure in the city. And due to the 10 years of experience, Believe me, we know at every time of the day and the week where the mobility is taking place. Where are the hotspots? Where should you build up a charging point in order to be relevant also with the usage of the charging point? So, and as soon as cities build up the infrastructure, we are also changing our fleet to an electric one. Yeah? But car sharing is not enough. Because the reality we believe in is we are not expecting people only using car sharing in cities. Car sharing is one little piece of the mobility puzzle you need as an inhabitant of an urban area to be really happy with the mode of transportation the city is offering to you in combination with, with what we are offering to you means we need the other types of transportation. We need the public transportation, we need the bike sharings, we need also other competitors in the car sharing area. Um, we need rental car companies. And that is what I mentioned at the beginning. 
we need to offer all the possible use cases you need in your daily life in order to really convince you guys to get rid of private cars. That's a very interesting one because it's a quite old one. It's 2013 and 2014. It's uh, one study who has been done uh, with um, the University of Dresden together. And uh, this is a quite conservative uh, figure. Means one car sharing car is replacing up to six private cars. And this is a real conservative one. We today believe it's more going in direction to eight, eight to 10 cars. Imagine your city um, having much more space due to the fact that uh, all your neighbors are having that in, in their mind and want to free up spaces in the city and are using uh, sharing products, not only cars, but sharing products, and I would say bringing more space in the city and improving uh, the quality of life uh, in their environment. The time is changing, but it's quite slow because as I mentioned, car sharing is ex existing still 10 years and we still have a lot of uh, private cars in the, in the city. But what is important also in uh, what we are doing means in the operation of car sharing in our environment, in our ecosystem, we also need to improve our business on a day-to-day basis. What does it mean? It does mean that running a car sharing business is not something you can do only with humans. I give you an example. With the 20,000 cars you have seen on the slide, we are doing 35 million rentals per year. 35 million. A city like Berlin, it's 15,000 rentals per day. If you want to get uh, into an area where you want to be more efficient and you want to, I would say, also look at what can I do to uh, use the car on the most efficient way, also when it uh, concerns some technical things you have to do or some cleaning things you have to do, you have to work with big data. It's impossible with humans to manage 15,000 rentals per day in a city like Berlin. That's why we also invested a lot in big data and what we can get out of it. And these are the areas, this is not only a slide, this is reality today at Chernow. First of all, um, we want to know where the demand is. Because if you want to be relevant, you need to be able to fulfill the demand. And I give you one example. Um, the 35 million rentals we are doing per year, if all the cars in our fleet would be fully autonomous, and I know it's not the near future with fully autonomous car in an urban area, because this is the biggest challenge for uh, the car manufacturer, but if all these cars would be fully autonomous, with half of the fleet, we would be able to do the same amount of rentals. Means today we know in Berlin where the demand is. We know where it should be. We know in which area we have too many cars and in which one we have less cars than we should have. But the problem is you cannot move all single cars to fit to the demand. But we are learning on a day-to-day -day basis how to manage this. And what we are also doing is um, we are looking into how to make it efficient to relocate a car, because this is the buzzword behind that. Yeah? If we know that one car is in a street where uh, the, the parking time of this car will be 10 hours or something like that, that we are not really relevant in this part of the city, we should relocate the car and put the car somewhere where we are much more relevant. But we should think about what can we do? Can we clean the car? Because most of you guys, if you use a car sharing, what you realize is sometimes they're very dirty. And the discipline or the mindset, I would say, uh, honestly, it's not so cool to let the bottle in the, in the car or to let your trash in the car. You know, the mindset like, I want to give back the car in a good shape because I know that someone else will use that car in a few minutes or something like that. We still have to work on that. There is another example. I think in our society, and it's proven, that um, the share of people smoking is going down. But if you are working in the car sharing area and you are sitting in our cars, you have the impression that the trend is going up. There are a lot of people that smoke in the car. They would never smoke in, the private, in their own private car, but they smoke in a car sharing car. Honestly, from my point of view, it's totally respectless. 
totally respectless for the other people. But it's really difficult. Even if you put a sticker, please don't smoke in the car. Please be so kind. There are some people that don't care. And if a car, like in Berlin, between Friday and uh, Saturday, is rented in average 22 times, yeah, only one guy in the middle is enough to get the user experience of the next one the baddest ever. Okay, we are working on how to identify exactly these guys who put the trash in the car and who smoke in the car. Okay, we will do, and then we will send some invoice to these guys. Because honestly, we thought we can bring the mindset to the community, but there are some people that don't care, okay? But also there, big data will help us to identify that, okay? Uh, what we are also doing, but I'm, I'm going in that uh, in a sec, is about dynamic pricing. That's also very important. Predictive churn. Um, we know that uh, some people, after opening five times the app, like in Prenzlauer Berg, if you are working uh, or living in Berlin, there are people telling me, Olivier, honestly, Prenzlauer Berg, I do not open the app because I know there is no car available. Never. No? Yes, Prenzlauer Berg is a hotspot for car sharing. Now, with uh, car to go and drive now together, it's much better, but it will be a challenge still in the, in the future. And we have to work on being, I would say, in contact with our, our customer and maybe also give a hint when a car is available in, in, the, in the neighborhood. Smart predictive cleaning is yes, what I mentioned. Efficiency for our business, combining cleaning, servicing the car, um, but also changing uh, or doing some smart repairs on the car or fueling up the car or recharging the car. Here uh, we are working heavily on how to bring the efficiency also in our processes. And I will uh, show you why it's so important. Um, the mint, um, uh, flex price, uh, why is it so important? Because yes, we have some area also in cities like Berlin or in Milano when we know our customer will park there the car and will, the car will be there for the next three hours. If you attract the price of the car uh, in that moment, in order to bring back the car, I would say with the customer to a much more attractive area of the city, you should do that. Yeah? It's not about search price and multiplying the price uh, with 10 or 7. Yeah? No, uh, it's a certain flexibility in the pricing in order to attract the, the product, but also, on the other hand, when the demand is really high, also to get uh, the advantage out of it for us. Why is it so important? Why is big data? So important because on the one hand, yes, we want to constantly uh, optimize ourselves, but we know that the future is the autonomous one. And if we want to be a real player in the autonomous area, it's really, really important to learn in a free floating because this will also be the case with uh, the autonomous car, even if we are much more efficient because the fleet will be uh, cut by half to do the same amount of, of rentals we still need to learn how to run efficiently uh, autonomous cars, also being at the right moment, at the right place, and delivering a car to the customer who needs a car, because also with the autonomous car, you will not want to wait 10 minutes to get a car. It must be directly there at your fingertips, I would say. Uh, fleet intelligence is also what I mentioned, uh, to have a high ready-to-rent uh, amount of, of cars in, in the city, because even if you have 2,000 cars in a city, if only 1,500 are available, you are not the best player uh, in, in that area. Um, intelligence, uh, intelligent maintenance is uh, what I mentioned uh, about being able to combine all the tasks you need to fix, because yes, we are working with real assets. And I know also in that conference here, all about digitalization, all, uh, a lot of startups only working with digital products, uh, heavy assets is not that sexy. Honestly, I think cars are still sexy and uh, I think working in a kind of hybrid modus with heavy assets and all the digitalization, what we are doing with our business at car sharing. It's, uh, it's a very, very attractive uh, business where we also uh, would like to provide a very, very attractive product to uh, our customer and also in the autonomous future. We start to understand what will be the expectation of our customer or of the future customer 
about uh, the experience with an autonomous car and we can provide this kind of input also to the car manufacturer. And this is uh, what we stand for and this is our vision, being a real player in the autonomous future and providing to you guys a big motivation to get rid of your private car. Thank you very much. All right, I think we have time for one question. Okay, so the question is from Mohammed. In the future, will you build car sharing devices in every Mercedes Mini and BMW being produced? Um, we, we are working directly together, yes, with, with BMW and Mercedes. You can imagine that uh, there are still two competitors, yeah? <laughs> when it uh, comes to selling cars, there are big competitors. We have, as a car sharing company, we have to learn how to communicate with, uh, I would say, this uh, technology to on the one hand on the BMW side, but on the other hand also mm -hmm. on the Mercedes side, means we will not have one technology for Mercedes and for BMW. We are learning to speak with different type of uh, models of vehicles. Yeah. Amazing. Give it up for Olivier. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.